Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Derbyshire Dales series. The Dales contain some of the most beautiful British scenery. It's a magnificent area. Here's one of its 109 civil parishes. Welcome back to the Derbyshire Dales, everybody. Today, I have got a collection of people with me. I've got good old Nicky. The less of the old, thank you. <laughs> you all know Nicky. I've also got Lauren. Hello, Lauren. And Hannah, who's walking off in the distance up there. We'll see them all on our way round this place. This is going to be a nice one, isn't it, Nicky? Yeah, lovely. It's a nice bank holiday Monday morning. Yeah. The sun is shining, the birds are tweaking, a little breeze in the air. It's quite early, but it's still nice. There's a lot to see in this place as well, including a very interesting grave, which I think you'll be very tempted to film, I would say. Mm, maybe so, yeah. We'll see. Welcome to Hathersage. <laughs> Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Here we go again, folks, in the Derbyshire Dales. Get ready for some more breathtaking views and amazing landmarks because this part of Derbyshire never ever disappoints. Today we're in the very far north of the Dales, as far north as you can go actually, and we're in the gorgeous village of Hathersage. Located just 10 miles away from the centre of Sheffield, Hathersage is a tourist destination, mainly because of the scenery surrounding it, in the form of the Hope and the Derwent Valley. All year round people come here to climb the stunning Stanage Edge, and many famous British rock and mountain climbers have done just that. Visitors also come armed with swimming trunks too. That's because here you'll find an open air heated swimming pool. How about that for unusual? Hathersage also has some literary connections too. Yes, this is another place that's linked to the Bronte sisters, although maybe not as much as Howarth was. We'll be covering that in this episode as well. It's all easily accessed by road or by train from Sheffield and Manchester, thanks to the presence of the Hope Valley Line, which cuts across the parish via an enormous stone and brick viaduct. Oh, and there's one more thing people come here for too. In the churchyard at St Michael and All Angels is a very interesting grave. In it lies a man who was over eight feet tall, according to some sources, yet he was known as Little John. Let's go and see it all, shall we? Our start point is Hathersage Railway Station, located within the southernmost reaches of the village. The station dates all the way back to 1894, when the Midland Railway opened a line between Dore and Chinley. That line is what we know today as the Hope Valley Line. Its original buildings were made of timber, and there was a signal box and a goods yard at one time with a 10-foot crane. Whilst Hathersage's residents were a little unenthusiastic about the station's opening, it stood the test of time. The history of the station, and a whole lot more besides, can be found on this brilliant information board on the walk up to the Sheffield-bound platform. As modern stations go, it's not bad. It sees one train every hour between Sheffield and Manchester Piccadilly, six days a week. Sunday services are a little less frequent. Let's go walking now, and on station approach you'll come across a rare postbox, dating from the time of Edward VII. 
Okay, now Hathers has just got some very unusual landmarks, and one of those landmarks we're about to head for. It's got a swimming pool. Do you fancy a dip, Nikki? Oh, I think Nikki's too taken with a cat at the moment. Let's head for the swimming pool and see what it's like. Courtesy of Hannah, there's now a TVI card on the board at the Hathersage Memorial Hall. This commemorates the fallen in the two world wars. Made of sandstone, it was open for communal use in 1929. Now speaking of communal things, it's right next door to Hathersage Swimming Pool. Now this is a rare landmark. In the 1930s, a local businessman and philanthropist, George Lawrence, gave a number of gifts to the village. These included a tennis court, a bowling green and a bandstand. All of his gifts to the village still survive today, including this swimming pool, which was gifted in 1936. The pool was very different to how it is today. Health and safety being largely unheard of back then, there was only one lifeguard and the water was heated by a coke boiler. The original 1936 changing rooms have since been modernised. It remains though as popular as ever, and it's right next to Hathersage's immaculate bowling green, which you can see in your shot now. So we didn't bring our swimming costumes and swimming trunks with us, but uh, the girls have at least found the park. So that's them sorted out for a few moments, enjoying themselves over there on some of this play equipment. Very, very well served in terms of leisure amenities is Hathersage. We're going to carry on walking through this park and we're heading up now towards the church. We'll see what we can find on the way though. Hannah, if you don't want this in the video, it'll cost you a tenner. If you don't want this in the video, it will cost you a tenner. On the way to the church, we've got a couple more landmarks. Here on Main Road is a milepost. Made of cast iron, it tells us we're six miles from Castleton and ten from Sheffield. It's just to the west of Hathersage Hall. Originally a small Tudor house dating from 1496, it's private access only. It's the location of the Hathersage Hall Business Park, one of two such parks in the village. Now for School Lane, and as you can see, we're heading for the church and the grave of Little John. To do that, we have to pass a school. That would be St Michael's C of E, built in 1858 as a national school. Now, because the school still uses the original building, this recently celebrated its sesquicentenary with an exhibition and a Victorian day for the children. Hathersage's nearest secondary school is Hope Valley College. Right next door is the Scotsman's Pack, whose name is a reference to the fact that it was an old pack horse inn. This is one of at least four pubs in or around the village. Okay, now it's time to go to the church, and just before we do, Nikki spotted pinfold. the pinfold. We like seeing these, don't we? Yeah. I'm sure people out there know what pinfolds are all about by now, because I've done many of these. You but just I'll just, I'll just pinfold. remind you, it's for keeping stray animals in, or it was. And, uh, and you have to pay a fine to get them out. Shall we put the girls in there? If you want. <laughs> look at the look on Lauren's face. <laughs> well, don't you, don't, you, don't you like the idea of spending some time in a pinfold? No. Why not? Why not? You might enjoy it. Really? Yeah, really. No. <laughs> right, let's go to the church up this hill. <laughs> After climbing that steep hill, we arrive at St Michael and All Angels Church. The earliest recorded church in Hathersage was built by Richard Bassett, the son of Ralph Bassett, Chancellor of England, during the reign of Henry I. The present Grade One listed structure dates mainly from the late 14th and early 15th centuries. Perhaps its most notable feature is a stained glass window removed from a chapel in the village of Derwent before it was submerged under the Lady Bower Reservoir. In front of its main door we find Little John's Grave, who, ironically, wasn't little at all. He stood at least seven feet tall, some sources say over eight. So who was he? Despite a lack of historical evidence for his very existence, Little John is regarded as a companion of Robin Hood. He was his chief lieutenant and second in command of the Merry Men. His grave lies under an old yew tree and was owned by the Naylor family. Sometimes some variation of Naylor is given as John's surname. 
I think it's fair to say that most people that come to visit the church here in Hathersage come to see this more than the actual church building itself because this is probably one of the most unusual graves I think you're probably ever going to find anywhere in the country quite frankly. Little John's grave and he certainly wasn't that little was he? You can tell just by the the length of the plot that he lies in. Okay let's turn around and head into the church which is open. We're going to go and explore the interior of this now. The girls are well ahead of me so here we go let's go and join them and see what we can find in here i do believe nikki you're gonna add to your little video with some bits and bobs in here aren't I you certainly am. so i'm no by no means am i ever am i gonna try and capture everything in here but oh nearly fell over <laughs> that's a good start isn't it we've got lights we have lights cool oh brilliant so I'm going to walk down into the chancel and see what gives down here. Big chancel, very big chancel. Lots of stained glass in here, that'll please the stained glass aficionados amongst you. There we go. And we'll come across into this little side chapel. Be still, it says on there. What have you found, girls? I found this. What is it? It says in this book of remembrance, it presents the parish church by the house of branches of the British Legion, written the names of the men and women in this village who so gave their lives in the It's a. So it's a war memorial then. Oh, there you go. Oh, very beautiful. Oh, look it's at these, these look like thrones. <laughs> Carved chairs. These two carved chairs were used by Queen Victoria and the Prince Consort when they opened St George's Hall, Liverpool, and afterwards they were given to this church in recognition of the fact that all the stone for the hall was quarried in the parish of Hathersage. Now these chairs are Austrian. So there you go. So I'm not going to go too much further here because obviously we're at, almost at the altar. But there's a tomb there at the side. I'm just wondering who that's for. It's got some crests on it for certain. I can't quite read it. But I don't want to go any further because I, it feels wrong. So we'll have to have a look and research and see if we can find out who this beautiful looking tomb belongs to. And this is something that will always interest me. There's some gorgeous embroidery here so it looks like some sort of gold work and sort of embroidery and that will always interest me <laughs> but very beautiful looks like is it st george maybe and the dragon who knows could be a lot of interesting tablets we've already seen the war memorial just there but we've also got one here which is to the memory of herbert graham lander who was a physician and a surgeon of this parish from 1896 until 1916, the youngest son of the late Reverend John Lander, who was rector for 45 years of Donington in Herefordshire. And it also mentions two Etters. We've got Ellen Etter, who was the wife of the above, and Isabel Etter, who was the daughter of the above. They both died in the 1900s. Underneath this, interestingly, the daughter died first in 1902. Uh, in, uh, and underneath this, we've got some uh, other bits and bobs of history. There's a pictorial timeline from 1830 until 2017. There we go. For all those of you who like church history, that'll be a nice read for you. I'm sure there's more to the church than what we've shown you, but Little John's Grave will always be the main attraction here. However, if you like your history, there's something else you might be interested in up here too. That would be Camp Green. And while the girls go off and explore the churchyard, I'm going to take you to that. You can't really tell much from these shots, but we're walking around the edge of Camp Green. Thought to have been constructed by the Danes, originally it was reused by the Normans in the 11th and 12th centuries as a sort of modified castle, which had a bailey. It's been partially built upon, but it's mostly intact, and it's rare too. It's what's known as a medieval ringwork. There are only 200 of these in the entire country, and less than 60 of them have baileys. 
The footpath around Camp Green brings us back to Church Bank, at the rear of the church. If you take a right turn here, you'll come face to face with the Vicarage. In 1845, Charlotte Bronte stayed here whilst visiting her friend Ellen Nussey. Her brother was the vicar at that time. Keep that little nugget of information in mind, it's a little preview for later. For now though, I found the girls in the churchyard and continued through it, downhill towards Bolt Lane. So at the bottom of the path, which is thankfully not as steep as the, as the road up to the hill, but still quite sharp, a sharp decline, you get to Hathersage Cricket Club, which you can see behind me. And if you turn left here, you're then heading for the village centre. Let's go and find all the shops and pubs and things that this place has got to offer. So as you might have guessed from the milepost earlier, Hathersage is on a former turnpike which ran across the Peak District from Sheffield. It was improved by a turnpike trust in the 18th century. So as you can imagine, the village has grown mainly around this one road, and the modern road, the A6187 or the former A625, whichever you prefer, remains the busiest part of the village today. Those gates you can see over there, by the way, are the entrance to the local Methodist church. On the wall of a vet is a blue plaque about George Lawrence. He was one of Sheffield's most successful razor blade manufacturers, and he was killed in the Sheffield Blitz in 1940. That plaque can be found in what I describe as Hathersage's de facto village centre, marked with a flagpole and a small garden. You should also look at the floor here too. You'll see some tiles under your feet, with the names of many local families, businesses and associations. It's almost like Hathersage's very own walk of fame. And you're well served as far as public toilets go here as well, because that's, that's literally where I'm stood right now. The toilets are behind the camera. You can't see them. Let's continue down this main street. We've only seen half of it. There's plenty more yet. That stone you've just seen was placed here last year to commemorate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Next to it is a much older milestone. The rest of the main road is lined with a selection of cafes and shops, both catering mainly for visitors like hikers and rock climbers. Hathersage has you covered for fuel as well though. If you come by car, you'll find this petrol station right in the centre of the village in amongst all the shops. You'll have noticed by now that the majority of the village is built of a yellowish brown stone. That's millstone grit. One of the nicest examples of this construction comes in the form of another pub. That would be the George Hotel, which dates back some 500 years. The George was transformed in 2021 into a popular gastro pub. And that brings us to a junction where Main Road meets Station Road. On it is Harrington's Butchers, who have a second shop in Penniston. And as the road starts to run off up the hill, there's just a couple more landmarks. One of them is St. Michael's Catholic Church, St. Michael the Archangel, which is down there behind these trees. And then opposite, you've got this building here. Now, I'm not totally sure what that is, but we're going to find out in a minute because I'm going to cross the road and see exactly what it's all about. It turns out it was St Michael's Environmental Education Centre. Effectively, it's a youth hostel, and for more than 30 years, this has been welcoming school groups from all over the country. Now, do you want another pub? Well, I'm going to give you one anyway. Here's the Little John Hotel on Station Road. There's no prizes for guessing who this dude is depicted on its entrance. The Little John is fast becoming Derbyshire's go-to place for craft beer. So says its website. Now then, let's talk industry. There are some clues as to this place's industrial past on Mill Lane. In 1750, a man called Henry Cocker opened the first mill here, and by the early 19th century, there were no fewer than five mills in Hathersage. They were renowned for making pins, needles and wire, primarily for the textile industries, and they used water power. Hathersage would have been a dusty, smoky place at that time, and it's so much different now. 
there's reasons why I love Derbyshire. There really are. <laughs> it's so beautiful, so beautiful. No matter where you are in the Dales, you're always gonna find something that looks quite amazing. And speaking of amazing structures, there's one thing left on this main walk around that we haven't yet spoken about, and it's right behind me there. You can see a massive railway viaduct, which Nikki is already having a look at and is beckoning me over to have a look at a bit closer. So let's go and do just that. It's massive. Carrying the Hope Valley line across Mill Lane is an impressive viaduct. Officially, this doesn't have a name, but it's known as Hathersage Viaduct by many. This whole structure is Grade 2 listed. It has seven semicircular arches with brick linings supported by massive gritstone blocks. It was built in 1892, and the station just a few hundred yards away to the east would open two years later. Aside from crossing the road, the viaduct also carries the line over a watercourse. That would be Hood Brook. Now, if you walk around Hathersage, you'll see this at various points, but this is the best place to see how pretty it is. The building next to it is the Music Mill, whose name pays homage to its musical heritage. It was here that the UK's very first gramophone needles were made. Nether Hall, just around the corner, only added to this area's beauty. We love this section. It is undoubtedly Hathersage's best little oasis of peace and tranquility. Okay, so two and a half hours later, we are back at the beginning. That's been very, very enjoyable. We've, we've thoroughly enjoyed our walk around Hathersage, but there are, of course, a few other bits that we need to do using the car. First of all, we're gonna head down to something called the Roundhouse, and that has got a very interesting story all by itself. Literally just to the south of the station, you'll come across a building with a rather unique shape. That would be the roundhouse or the round building. It has a rather unique tale too, and it relates to David Meller, one of the UK's best known designers, manufacturers and craftsmen. Meller was born in Ecclesall, a suburb of Sheffield, where his father was a toolmaker for the Sheffield Twist Drill Company. From the age of 11, Meller was intensively trained in craft skills. He would go on to study at the Royal College of Art in London from 1950. Thereafter, he would become a master cutler. In 1990, he was able to realise a lifelong ambition by opening a cutlery factory. This he did by building the roundhouse on the redundant foundations of an old gas holder, hence the building's perfectly circular shape. It was designed by architect Sir Michael Hopkins. A shop and a design museum was opened alongside the round building in 2006. There's a cafe here these days too. Now sticking with the driving, we're heading up to some landmarks to the north of the village. A lot of Hathersage's westernmost areas are residential. This one we're passing through now is a good example. This is Jagger's Lane, and if you were to follow this road to its end, you would rejoin the A6187 on its way into the Hope Valley. However, that's for a different episode. What we're interested in here is to the north. Something of a rare sight out here, Burley Lane takes us through an area of shady woodland, which lines a steep valley with Hood Brook away to our right. We're heading for an area called North Lees, which has a campsite. It's run by the Peak District Authority, and it has room for some 60 tents. Okay, so remember the vicarage from earlier and how I said Charlotte Bronte once stayed there? To explain the significance of that, we're now at North Lees Hall. Bronte was in Hathersage in 1845, at the time she was writing Jane Eyre. Now, as we know, the Brontes like to create fictional places based on real-life locations. North Lees Hall ticks that box. Many of the locations mentioned in Jane Eyre match locations in Hathersage, including Thornfield Hall, which is generally accepted as being this. Fun fact too, even her use of the name Eyre comes from Hathersage, because at that time the Eyres were a family of the local gentry. North Lees Hall is famous for the connection, yes, but in its own right it's a notable building. Dating from 1590, it's a fine example of a North Derbyshire tower house. 
it was occupied at various times by members of the Eyre family. These days the hall is now divided into two apartments which are available as holiday lets. So it's not a far walk up here but it's certainly a steep hill. If you thought the hill up to the church was steep, this is next level. I am totally out of breath but it's worth it because this house is very historic, worth the climb. The footpath carries on and heads up up there towards Stanage Edge which is where I'm about to go in a moment but luckily I can drive and get a bit close to that so I don't have to carry on up the hill from here. That though is North Lees Hall and isn't it magnificent? Now it's time to make my way back down the hill and reconvene with the others and on the way back down thankfully it's a, a bit easier than climbing up the hill and I've also got this as a nice bit of scenery to enjoy as I do it. Our final job in this episode is to climb Stanage Edge, a gritstone escarpment which dominates the northeastern reaches of the Derbyshire Dales. Famous as a location for rock climbing, the word Stanage literally means stone edge. Its highest point is High Neb at 458 metres above sea level. A paved pack horse road ran along the top of the edge and remains of it can be seen, as can remains of the Long Causeway, once thought to have been a Roman road. It passes Stanage Pole in doing so, which is an ancient way marker on the route to Sheffield. The edge also features a well-known cave in the cliff, known as Robin Hood's Cave, further cementing the area's connection with the Sheriff of Nottingham. Many famous rock climbers have climbed this, and now we can say we have too. It's featured in films and on TV, most notably in the 2005 film Pride and Prejudice, during which a scene where Elizabeth Bennet is seen facing the horizon from the edge itself. Here we are, we've made it to the top of Stanage Edge. We lost Nikki halfway up, decided not to walk all the way to the top. I don't blame her because it's quite steep and it's uh, a bit difficult to find your footing in places. But Hannah's made it up here with me, haven't you Hannah? <laughs> and the view is well worth it. This is absolutely amazing. There are reasons why I love Derbyshire and this is one of them. Stunning.
thanks for watching this video, folks. Don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already. It really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also, if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.